listening to you, if they listen to this, this hour or whatever it's going to be, and they go, ah, that's not necessarily his philosophy is in mind, but maybe you take one thing away. You take one thing away from it. That's pretty good. Or if the takeaway is that what we're talking about or what I'm saying is not what they want to do, that's a takeaway because then you then won't, if you recognize a philosophy that is like ours, you'll steer clear of it and spend your time doing something else. So that's a takeaway. So right. if you, I'm into exponential growth. Um, I have a concept called double the penny. Because if you take a penny and you double it every day, a penny to two cents, two yeah. cents to four cents, four. Right. within 30 moves, you're at a million dollars. Yeah. 30. So what I do in my career is I'm just trying to, wherever I'm at, I'm trying to double whatever. I'm trying to double a penny. Uh, I'm trying to take this 16 cents and make it 32. I'm trying to make this $100,000 project and knock it out of the park so I get my $200,000 project. Because right. in another two moves, I'll have my million dollar project. I think a lot of folks, and I'll give you this analogy, are, you know, get anxiety because their time frames, I think, are out of whack. They expect to succeed too quickly. Yeah. And I give this analogy. I go, if I was a senior in, in college and a freshman walked in crying, <laughs> I go, well, what's wrong? Well, <laughs> I was away from home for the first time. I got all A's. It was hard to be adjusted, but I did really well. And they're not going to let me graduate. <laughs> but you're a freshman. I know. I know. But I did well and I did this and I did this. Idiot, you're a freshman. And you use the goals in the front of freshman year in order to put yourself in great position for sophomore year. Yeah. And you do that in order to put yourself in position to get together for a great junior year. So that right. you can go to senior year and graduate summa cum laude, magna cum laude. You're not going to succeed after you're not gonna graduate after your freshman year. And when you understand that and take that pressure off of you, go to, you go to the football games and you'll go see some plays and you'll go do some other stuff and you'll do freshman during your freshman year. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's, uh, I think it was uh, Zig Ziglar, who's pretty famous motivational yeah, speaker. Like and I, I can't say for sure, but it was like one of these, like. Most people know who who the speaker is. I think it was Zig who said, I was a seven-year overnight success. Oh, yeah. And I totally get that. And, and you look, at, you look at, at the acting community and the people that, that we go, oh, wow, that person's really great. And then you go back, because we have IMDb, so we can go back. And, and then you see the 25 shows that that person did where yep. maybe they were an extra yeah maybe that maybe they had one line but frankly it wasn't particularly mem memorable you, you, yeah wh whatever it is whatever philosophy you want to put into it you don't become a partner at a law firm overnight there's no, no lawyer that's going to get graduate from law school and within two unless they're their dad's name is on <laughs> the thing within a year be a partner that's not how it works and that and that's okay when you allow yourself the time it takes to mature and grow again it, it it relieves the stress it gives you the time to become great i think a lot of times you you see a lot of actors who maybe get opportunities that they're ill prepared for oh, gosh, and, yes. and they don't knock it out of the park or they're 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 again they're afraid or they or they're They'll sabotage it for some reason because they know they can't sustain this mirage. Right. Whatever it is, you are allowed to give yourself the time it takes to become excellent because you will be found. You, 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 it's not that you'll be found out. It's that you'll find your people and you'll find your tribe and they'll find you because you're just keeping the putting out in the universe great. Yeah, good absolutely. Work. And the fact of the matter is that our struggles, our failures are actually where our biggest growth comes. There was a great book called The Talent Code by Dan, uh, Daniel Coyle. And it's awesome. Because in this book, what he's talking about is how when we practice something, we build myelin. So he, he was talking about this young girl playing the cello mm -hmm. and she's struggling to play this song. She gets up to a certain point and then she slows down and she's struggling to find the right notes and the right bridge and all of that. And he's, that's where the most learning is happening. And I think I know my own personal journey that 
I'm going to, there's stuff I'm going to do, put out to the universe and it will, it will fail. It will just not, people aren't going to like it. Uh, it's not going to, whatever, but that's okay. I'm building this YouTube channel, right? Some of the episodes are going to be great. Some are not so great. You've been in TV series where I, I think you would fully admit that there are episodes that are really great and there are episodes that you're like, Dude, I've been, I, I've been on, I, did, I did a show where I call, it was called Under One Roof, where I was, me and Flavor Flav, the, yeah, boy, yeah. Flavor Flav played brothers. And I believe there was some magazine that called that one of the 10 worst shows <laughs> of all time. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wasn't under any illusions that I was, we were, you know, solving and curing cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty sure that your name would not come up for an Emmy. Flav, we weren't, we weren't solving cancer. Yeah. We weren't getting the cure to COVID. No. We were, we were acting a fool. And we had a good time. And, and the show was what it was. And when it gets canceled, you know, call Flav. Ah! And then you go on to the next. And then you go on, to, you go on to the next thing. Yeah. And in the, but in the meantime, you have met all those people. You've met the production companies. You've met yeah. the production entities. You've made people laugh in the scenes that you can make people laugh in. Yeah. You squirrel away a little money so that when there's a little downtime, you're living off one of the worst shows ever on TV history. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all, it all can be positive depending on, on how you want to spin it. And, and, and yes, there's a million analogies of the guys who get into Hall of Fame are 300 hitters. Yeah. That, that means they hit the ball three times and fail seven. Yeah. Um, champions, the, 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 whoever's going to win the World Series or the or the NBA championship is going to possibly lose three times, but win four times, and they're the champion. Yeah. So losing means nothing. It's this fourth one right. that puts the ring on this finger. Absolutely. And there are people who spend their whole professional sports career never get into, never get to play in a playoff. Sure. Never get the ring. Never doesn't mean that they weren't successful. Doesn't mean exactly. that they weren't good at what they're doing. And, yeah, and, and, and for the vast majority of people who are listening to this and whatever careers that, that they have, a championship or ultimate success isn't necessarily the end game. So you can decide what victory means for you, however you want it. And oh, you can absolutely. set the bar here. You can set the bar here. You can set the bar here. And you can consider yourself a success now. <laughs> yeah. You, you can. There's no one that is, will take that away from you. And ultimately what it is, I think something that you and I share is we are our, num our own number one fan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love me. I think I'm fantastic. And the way that comes across is I get on stage and I'm, I, I look confident. People have said, oh my God, that, that speech was great. Weren't you nervous? Yeah, I was a little nervous when I started, but once I started, I was in my element. I'm sure that aside from this webcam, if there's a camera and some lights on and, and a mic recording, I know that all of a sudden, Kelly just kind of, ooh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm home. What? But with that means that we all have to critique ourselves as well. And we have to go, you know what? Because there's, there's, all, there's always growth. We can always grow. Oh, we can absolutely. Always, we can always incrementally get better. But saying that we are our own biggest fans, it means that even when you lose the game, mom comes up to you, gives you a hug, and takes you to Dairy Queen. Yeah. So you have to do that for yourself, even though when it's not the greatest, you have to hug yourself and take yourself to Dairy Queen or whatever it is. And then you have to look at the tape and you have to go, OK, you know what? I didn't connect these two thoughts and maybe I can put that together. Oh, man, hey, maybe this is a better bridge to this analogy than that was. That doesn't mean that too was a, success, a failure or everything. That means that it can be it can it can be that much tighter. It well, can but always be incrementally whatever. You know, I'll bring us back for a second and talk about stand-up comedy. I've, I I I did some stand-up comedy and did the open mic nights. Did that and I I took a comedy course and one of the things that I learned and I'm like, oh, that's right. Which is, on a given night, you you can tell a joke and it kills one day, and the next day you go and there's crickets. Yeah. And you make that determination. Same material. You can have you can have you can have the same material and get in and get different results. Because Absolutely. And that decision of of when to throw something out because it's just not working, 
is two or three times where it falls dead. Because just once, if you get up and, and you are doing a set and you tell a joke and it just doesn't go over well, but you still know that the, the premise is good. It's funny, yeah. right? Yeah. Go try it again because it yeah. may be just the audience just wasn't in the mood for it. I, I know having done open mic nights, there were times where uh, people have been already sitting through two hours of semi-horrendous. Yeah. And yeah. even though I might get up and on a, if I'd gone first, I might have really done well, but man, they are worn out. So no matter how good my material is, I'm only going to get 25% of the reaction that I normally would get. Yeah. Yeah. And again, if you were, if, if someone was a professional comic, they would have been in those situations or they're working their way up to being able to recognize, okay, the crowd is tired and they're quiet. What do I have in the arsenal? What's in my quiver? What's back here that brings a, a crowd back to life? Is it like blue material where I say every two seconds and at least, you know, they don't, is it a story? Is it a, you know, part of being professional in that is that you have to learn how to read the room. Oh, absolutely. And that is, and that is a professional comics job. And the only way you learn to read the room is by being in enough rooms. And that's wherein you, it goes right back to what we were saying. What is your strategy? What's your vocation? Are you planning on well, getting every the 10, night? 10,000 hours. For the next 100 nights. Are you planning on doing that? Because if you're not planning on doing that, if you're only planning on getting up once a week, that means you're only getting up 52 times a year. And you're going up against people that have gone up 520 times. Yeah. And the bookers have seen them and the bookers have saw that they're good. And, and so no matter, you know, how tight your set is, you're not going to get more eyeballs in the guy who went up 10 times more than you did. It's just, this is just basic math. And I think that if people, again, something that can put their shoulders down is if they do the math and understand you need to put in your 10,000 hours, results will come as you start to do that. Just start clocking in your hours, man. Stop bitching that. Again, stop being a freshman bitching that they're not graduating. Right. Absolutely, Kelly. No, ab absolutely. And it is, you want to know what? No matter what you do, whatever your job is, it takes time. It takes sure. experience. It is, there isn't that overnight success. Here I am launching a, a YouTube channel and I could peel off hundred dollar bills on it. How to get a thousand subscribers and, and stuff. And you're right. There are people who launch a channel have, for whatever reason, they get all these subscribers and they're super successful. There is a lot of noise out there. I yeah. gotta just put sh stuff out there and just say my audience, I will find my audience and we'll build yeah. slowly. That's all it is. And the people that are overnight successes, good for them. Again, we talk about Hollywood being a confluence. You hear a lot of Hollywood stories about, hey, this guy just got off the bus and a casting director saw him and he's, woo, and that brings how many more thousands? Yes, that's, that does happen. And every day somebody hits the lottery. But I have never met, and I know very few people that know somebody who has hit the lottery. So if I had a friend and who has a wife and two kids, and I say to them, what's your strategy for taking care of your wife and children, putting them through school and doing that? And they go, my strategy is to hit the lottery. Yeah. I'll be like, you're, you're now you're allowed to hope that, but I say this, buy your lottery tickets on the way to work. Yeah. Your job is not to buy the lottery tickets and sit outside the liquor store until the balls drop and see yeah. if you go, fuck. That's not your goddamn job. Your job is not to hit the lottery. Your right. job is to put in your time. Like I said, buy your lottery tickets on and, the way to work if you want, but put it, but, but put in your time. And, and even the people who quote, step off the bus and got, you know, cast as a whatever, uh, in a leading role or a major supporting role, there are those people who are just, they're that good and, and they put out a really great thing. However, by and large, you might have seen them and then you never hear from them again. Why? Absolutely. Because they don't actually have the experience. They were great in that one part. Yeah. yeah. Probably because they had an awesome script and a great director and all of that. 
that supported them to be good. I know you probably, you were talking about that show with Flav. I think you probably read the script and it was like, this is not the best script in the world, but hey, you wanna know what? You still had the Benjis at the end of the day, so. Yeah, yeah and, I had, and I had the opportunity to, to make the best of it and to, and to find the funny in it. And I also had the opportunity to be a series regular on a show so that means when I get my next show, my quote for how much I get for a show is that much higher. Absolutely. So, so there's nothing you and know, there's, negative. And there's more for your reel to show sure. that what you've done. So Yeah. So again, a lot, a lot of times I, I talk about like a body in motion. These are laws of physics. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. Yeah. So do that. Put in, your, put in your eight hours a day. I don't think I, you know have any philosophies that are brand new to Kelly Perrine. I've just adopted some of the philosophies that are out there and actually put them in, into play. I don't think, I don't think in 2020 people don't know how to say lose weight if they want. They just don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 there's, there's no new trick, new pill, new something to da, da, da. They kind of just don't want to do it. <laughs> you know? Exactly. No, there, there, there's no doubt about that. That it's honestly the formula isn't that hard. No, it's not. Less but, in than than going out. And yeah, you know, I, I you may not know it looking at me, but I'm a, I'm a marathon runner. I, I did know that because I was a marathon runner. And so the thing is this, the thing is this, I, I have always, with my philosophies and my work, I've always loved the metaphor of the marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And so I remember when I was about 33, I said, you know what? I'm going to run a marathon so that when I use that metaphor, I can actually use it with some type of knowledge of what an actual physical marathon was so i trained for six months i went and did do aids project los angeles so i raised money for aids awareness yeah um i lost some weight they travel you over to honolulu so i'm like this is a win situation yeah. and i go you know, i will cross it me off of my life's list of things to do and so i remember i was at mile 24 yeah and i was at four hours and 50 four hours and 40 minutes and i told myself i wanted to get in under five hours. Sure. So I have two miles to go after already running 24. So I said, God, if you get me in under five, I will never <laughs> do another one of these again. And so I picked it up and I got in at four hours and 58 minutes. Woohoo! Took, took my shoes, threw them into the water, <laughs> took my little sports watch, threw it out, said never again. And then about a month later, I'm like, I was looking at the medal. I'm like, huh, that was, that's pretty cool. You know what? LA Marathon's coming up. So I, I've now run 19 marathons. I don't win them. No, of course not. But it's about discipline. I like having something on the calendar that I have to work towards. Absolutely. I've talked in prior episodes a lot about my marathoning and how, how much it is. Every marathon's its own epic journey. And the how like i i talked about how i break down mentally doing a marathon which is first goal is to make it to 13.1 because now i i'm halfway done then it's 17 because then you have single digits left then you get to mile 20 and hey i only got a 10k left and if i made it this far and then yeah. you get and then you, you get to count again now one of the things I know they got to do it, but man, I wish they wouldn't put the mile signs up until about mile five, because nothing, as much as you try and not say whatever, mile two, you got 24 more. Yeah, it's not, yeah. And it yeah. is just it can be mentally debilitating because you're like, I'm not thinking about it. You're, part of your brain's going, yeah, you got 24 left. That's a long way. Yeah, you know, and here's the funny thing about how, how I trained for a marathon. I did a thing, I forget the, the, the guy's name, but we did, I had a watch that I would run for six minutes and then it would beep. Yep. And then I would walk for a minute. Yep. So six minutes into the marathon, my watch goes off and I start uh, walking. Yep. Six minutes into the marathon. And so people are walking by and go, what are you doing? Run, get out of here, what are, come on, sit down. 
And so every six minutes and 14 hours in, there's people on the side going, what are you walking for? What are you walking for? But they didn't know what I was doing. They didn't know my pace. They didn't know my strategy. Absolutely. They didn't know my plan. I passed by them in five seconds and I waved to them, but I wasn't going to let their not knowing what my goal was, what my preparation was, well, what my plan was, how I was going to come in five hours and how doing it that way pushes back the, the wall that a lot of people inevitably hit. And they didn't know I trained for six days. That's all right. Let them. So the people that are in your life that are trying to tell you to get off your pace and to get off your plan and to do what I want, you got to just wave to them because they will pass you by as you keep walking. And I also say, because I've done a number of marathons where it hurt, but I go, you can cry, but do it while you're moving forward. <laughs> well, absolutely. Look, uh, Kelly, ab- absolutely. And I haven't done, I've only done four. And <laughs> only that's four more I'll, than 99% of the I know. Population. And 11 halves, I was lucky enough to, to get to run Boston in 2014. And that was unbelievable, beyond epic. That was so, yeah, yeah. oh, was that bucket list? And I'm like, no, that was holy grail moment. Let me tell you, <laughs> when I crossed the finish line there, crying like a baby. Why? Because yeah. it's something that I had dreamt of. And all those 5 a.m. mornings in the cold and the rain and, and all of that as I was training was so worth it because right. I can say, for the rest of my life, I am a Boston Marathon finisher. Yeah, yeah you do that. You're a so, marathon runner, you know? Yeah, I mean? so, so, so you do that, and we do other, and there's, so there's really nothing that somebody can say, you know what, Kelly Alexander, y- you can't do that. There's nobody that can look me in the face and do that, and I, and I believe them. <laughs> there's, there's, I know. There's, there's nothing. There's nobody that can tell me if I don't, I might, look, I might not play in the NBA, but I wouldn't say that's my dream. <laughs> Absolutely. So no, I look, I totally get you. And there is, that's one of the things that's great about marathoning. As long as you cover the distance, you get a medal. You get a medal. And you should. I was talking to someone who goes, oh, I think it's wrong. I think they should only give it to first, second, and third. I'm like, okay, you go cover 26.2 miles and you tell me whether you feel that you don't deserve some yeah, and, and anecdotally, how are they doing in their life? I'm sure they're first, second, and third, and everything in their life. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, Kelly, this has been absolutely epic to talk to you. Thank you well, for you taking know what? the time. Yeah, hey, man, you, you know what? You, you, thank you for thinking of me, because I, I can't lie to you. I, I love what I do. I've been doing it, like I said, I train for it. And so I feel blessed every day that I'm able to make a living in the vocation that I chose. Some days is tough, some days is hard, but I, there are very few days that I go, I shouldn't have chosen this. What am I doing here? I got to quit. There are they're, they're hardly ever, if any, days like that. There are some days where I go, I got to get through this, or I just got to get to the other side of it, or when is that one minute break coming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, again, just one, one foot in front of the other. The whole idea of being epic, we didn't really necessarily start off to be epic, but the fact that we're here and we we're, we're keep striving, that in and of itself is part of the epic journey that we are on. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I think that epic is, sometimes it is a decision. You, we both made that epic decision to run a marathon, okay? Yeah. That decision is obviously quite epic. But then when you're doing your life's work, other people may say, oh, that's epic. And look at how successful they are and stuff. I don't view it. I just view it as this is what I am meant to do. And so I'm going to do it the best I can. And see, look, I I, look, I, I, I don't have kids. So when somebody, when I see somebody with kids and they're like raising three of them and they're homeschooling them now and they're doing this and they're distance learning and they're doing, I, I'm, I'm like, God, Sam, you're a superhuman. <laughs> that, that seems epic to me, man. I'm like, good Lord, how do, how do they do it? And they're like, ah, oh, what do you mean? It's what, what do you mean? How do I do it? I, I have to do it. This is what I do. This is what I do. And they don't really see it as anything. And I'm like mind blown as how they have the juggling ability. They got to cook the food and they got to do this. And they got to get the kid on Zoom. They got to do this. We have to do this. I'm like, that's just epic. So in our own lives, we all have epic ability, all that. We should all look at ourselves in the mirror and kind of pat ourselves on the back, say we're doing all right, getting good grades, future so bright, we got our shades, we're doing all right. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And we should all, I, I want to encourage everyone out there, you should be your number one fan. You don't love you. How's anyone else going to love you? And we are all, we are all fantastic. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to end with a quote from Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Some are fancy on the inside. Some are fancy on the outside. Everyone's fancy. Everyone's special. I am fancy and so are you. Fred Rogers. Man, totally nailed that. I, I can't top that. So with that, I say thank you for thinking of me, Zan. No problem. Thank you, Callie. All right.